So, what's the best way to eat a cupcake? Turn it into a sandwich. Step 1. Peel off the paper wrapped around the cupcake. Step 2. Carefully divide the cake into two parts. Step 3. Put the bottom side of the cupcake on top of the frosting. This is how you eat a cupcake like a pro. Ever wondered what that little hole at the top of your sink is for? There can be one, two, or three of them, depending on the design. These holes may appear under the near rim facing the mirror. They may face forward if they're between the faucet valves. The holes are there to prevent an overflow and to allow air in the drain to circulate. If the hole wasn't there, a basin filled with water would drain slowly because of the resistance it puts on the air going out of the drain. Your bathtub also has this hole, but the kitchen sink doesn't. A bathtub takes longer to fill, so you may get distracted, walk away, and forget you're filling the tub, so it's kind of more necessary there. The kitchen sink has overflow protection in the shape of the divider between the two standard basins, and this divisor rises lower than the rim. The majority of hiking backpacks have a secret feature that can literally save your life. If you have one, take a closer look at its chest strap. You'll see there's a built-in whistle on its buckle. It's for situations where you're all alone, stuck somewhere while hiking, or you were in a group but eventually separated from them. Uh Uh-oh! Not all backpacks have a whistle, but those modern ones, designed specifically for mountain biking, hiking, snowboarding, skiing, and other similar outdoor activities, do. Now, speaking of backpacks, and I was, many brands have standard models that come with a patch sewn into the outer part in the shape of a diamond. We call this the lash tab, or as some say, pig snouts. Originally, the manufacturers came up with this feature so people could carry an ice axe during mountaineering. They made it from leather because they wanted to reduce the possibility of freezing. Of course, the average backpacker doesn't go on such adventures. But the patch is still useful because you can hold and immediately access some items like headphones or a bottle of water. Or tie your hiking shoes and some other essential things so you have more room inside your backpack. Above each car door, you'll usually find a handle. I call it the oh no handle. It's there to give you something to hold on to when your grandma decides to go full NASCAR. These handles are actually especially useful, all jokes aside. Me? Jokes aside? A lot of people need a little extra help getting in and out of the car. As for why the driver's door usually doesn't have one, there are a couple of reasons. For one, the steering wheel can function as a makeshift grab handle. Drivers might also be inclined to grab the handle while driving. Not safe. Modern car keys have a nice trick up their sleeve, if they had sleeves. They can control your windows. Try holding the unlock button on your car keys for a few seconds. There's a chance that after 5 seconds, your car windows will magically open. If you hold the lock button again, your windows should close. Only a few special people actually use this cool trick. Check out your owner's manual. Your car might be one of the lucky ones. If your internet goes down and you really need that gaming fix, Google has you covered. You click on your favorite shortcut and disaster. The dreaded message appears, unable to connect to the internet. But wait, what's that little pixelated dinosaur next to it? Instead of panicking, press that spacebar. This little game has become a huge hit, and it's a lot more addictive than it looks. A dinosaur jumping over a cactus? (laughs) Genius! During the colder months, putting on a beanie can mean the difference between staying home and going outside. And you can thank French sailors for the pom-pom on top. This was to stop them from banging their heads on those pesky beams down below. Ow! Fast forward a bunch of decades, now everyone's wearing them. Next time you're on a flight, look above each window. You'll notice some little triangles sitting there. They're there to show the flight crew the best spots to view the plane's flaps through the window. If you're worried about a little air sickness ruining your flight, try to choose a seat that's located between these triangles. Sitting between the wings puts you in the direct center of the plane and offers the smoothest possible ride. Now, sitting at a long traffic light usually makes me hungry, bored, and a little curious. Have you ever thought about those black dots and that black line all along the edges of your windshield? 
It looks cool enough, but come on, it's gotta have a hidden use, right? Hmm. Well, the black line is called a frit, and it's there to help your windshield from popping out of the car. Pretty important, I'd say. Microwavable instant rice loves to fall over in the microwave, if you're me, that is. And like me, you've probably struggled with keeping the package upright. As it turns out, the flaps that fold out from the bottom create a nice sturdy base. Push them out and give it a try. Hey, why didn't I learn this in school? Has that half-finished 2-liter bottle of soda left over from pizza night gone flat? Rather than pouring it down the drain, add it to your compost heap. The sugar feeds good microorganisms and increases the acidity of the pile, helping organic material break down faster. Any pair of scissors will go blunt sooner or later, but don't let that stop you. There's a product in your kitchen that can help bring them back to life fast. Mm. Aluminum foil isn't just for leftover lasagna. Fold a sheet of it into quarters and start cutting. Cutting through the foil will sharpen those scissors right up, but not if they're too blunt. Rescue them while there's still time. Those little escalator brushes aren't there to clean your shoes, even though they can do a rather good job. These bristles are actually a serious safety feature. Without them, clothes, shoelaces, and bags can get caught in them when they're too close to the sides. The little brushes are also there to tickle you, to remind you to look down and take care. Hey, I always thought it was a bug rubbing up against me. Half belts. Seriously, what's up with those things? Well, some military jackets used to double as blankets, and the half belt helped keep the extra material from getting in the soldier's way. Nowadays, they're mostly used as a fashion accessory. Well, I hate to break this to you, but money isn't actually made of paper, which also proves that money doesn't actually grow on trees. Most banknotes are 25% linen and 75% cotton, which is why they have such a distinct look and feel. Back in the 19th century, money was made of parchment paper. That's why people could very easily counterfeit it, unlike now. The Eiffel Tower is almost 6 inches taller during the summer. When you heat up some substance, its particles start to move more actively and take up a bigger volume. That's something they call thermal expansion. When the temperature lowers, the substance contracts again. Such an effect is more prominent in gases, but you can also track it in liquids and solids, including iron. Because of this, people build large structures like bridges using expansion joints. They allow a structure some leeway to expand and contract, and such changes don't cause any damage. Wow, I have some pants like that. Now, honey can last for thousands of years without going bad. Bees land on flowers to collect sugary nectar. Then they transport it back to their hive and transfer it to other worker bees. These bees reduce the water content of the nectar by repeatedly drinking and regurgitating the liquid. Hmm, bee barf. Special enzymes in their stomachs break down the glucose in the nectar, and it becomes more acidic. Bees deposit this nectar in the honeycomb and start fanning it with their wings so that the water evaporates more quickly. The honey is now highly acidic and low in water content, which keeps it safe from spoiling. The bacteria that can cause the rest of the food to go off can't survive in such conditions. Now, a long time ago, people didn't elevate their mattresses off the floor. This practice started in ancient Egypt and continued in many other cultures. People realized it was cold on the floor, and they could warm their beds easier if they were off the ground. Houses used to be more drafty. Cold air came in from under the doors. There was no central heating, so people had to find other ways to stay warm. Warm air tends to rise, and if you're positioned higher, you won't be as cold as on the floor. Also, this way, people could keep their beds clean more easily. In simple homes, floors used to be way dirtier than today, and all that dirt usually migrated into beds. Continuing now to talk dirty, do you think people are naturally clean and tidy? After all, our ancestors, who lived thousands of years ago, already used latrines and were tidying their hair with combs, and they kept their homes and themselves clean. Our natural need for hygiene and cleanliness is driven by our sense of disgust. That's the very mechanism that helps our bodies stay safe and protects them from different infections. That's why we're more sensitive to certain smells and things. But we still have some pretty sloppy habits. For example, eating snacks over a keyboard. Ew! I certainly never do that. 
But there are animals that are even neater than us humans. For example, rattlesnakes like to keep their surroundings tidy. Some of them even use their muscular necks and triangular heads to sweep aside messy grass when they hunt. Many animals like to clear their path when going after their future meal. Reptiles, too. Less vegetation increases their chances of catching food. Songbirds also prefer to keep it neat and get rid of uneaten food, eggshells, and other trash in their nests. This way, they also make their homes less visible to their enemies. Many pairs of kitchen scissors today have a serrated opening where the handles and blades meet. You can use this as an herb stripper to destem difficult herbs like thyme, rosemary, and chives. Saves you a lot of time trying to pick the leaves off by hand. And if you're short of a vase, you could present roses to your significant other this way. Just be careful when you're pointing the sharp end. That weird little hole at the top of a lollipop stick you can see after finishing a candy is not a whistle. Mm -mm. It has something to do with the manufacturing process. When pouring hot molten caramel into a mold, some of it will seep into this mysterious hole and harden. This way, the candy will stay on the stick and won't fall off. If you're not at your computer, take a look at your keyboard right now. If you're not, that's okay. Here's one on the screen. The keycaps are arranged in what's called the QWERTY layout, named after the first six keycaps below the numbers. As it turns out, it wasn't always this way. They used to be laid out alphabetically, which would make more sense when you think about it. The alphabetical layout fell out of use because long ago there were things called typewriters. Remember those? You press down a key and a type bar would fly out, hitting an inked ribbon and stamping a letter on the piece of paper. Eventually, typists got good at this and typed faster. Too fast. The type bars would eventually get caught in a log jam with each other, ruining the flow. To fix this problem, they made keyboards with randomized keycaps. The new layout actually worked better because it made typing harder, helping to slow typists down and prevent the type bars from getting stuck. Much better! Today, no type bars. No typewriters, mostly. People are still fast nowadays, but you just can't help but wonder who is faster though, us or them? Keyboards have another hidden feature too. Have you ever noticed that the F keycap and the J keycap have little bumps on the bottom of them? As it turns out, they're there to help people figure out where they are on the keyboard without having to take their eyes off the screen. Grabbing a takeaway cup of coffee at your favorite cafe might be just what you need to fully wake up in the mornings. When you get back home or to work, though, you might be afraid to stain your desk when you put the steaming hot coffee down. Worry not, your plastic lid isn't only good for keeping your coffee hot, it also doubles as a coaster. In fact, they're the perfect size to hold a cup. Try it for yourself. This one's going to come in handy if you're a home cook. If you're like me, you might have a bit of trouble deciding how much pasta you need for just one serving. Well, if you've got a pasta scoop, grab that. Most people don't know what the little hole in the middle is for and assume it's supposed to help with water drainage or something. It turns out that it helps you measure out a perfect serving. Just see how much dry spaghetti you can fit in the hole and use that as one portion. Out of the store buying coat hangers, you might notice that the plastic ones feel cheaper than the wooden ones. There's a good reason for this. Wooden hangers are made out of cedar wood. The big difference between the two is that the wooden ones repel bugs and moths. They're stronger and last longer, too. Perfect for things that might stay in your closet for a long time. Instead of being solid, there could be a couple of reasons for that. Manufacturers use less metal, so a card is both lighter and cheaper. Also, the supermarket staff can see what's in your cart more easily. It's easier to keep the cart clean this way, too. Imagine if it was sealed and somebody spilled orange juice or milk inside of it. It's easier for a cart to drain this way if it's outside in the rain. Speaking of holes, why do you think laundry baskets often have holes? It's for the laundry inside to breathe. If you use it for dirty laundry, it's harder to vent the sealed basket and prevent your laundry from mildewing. Also, baskets without vents harbor way more static electricity. Toilet seat covers have been used wrong for way too long. 
I see you ripping off that flap that looks like a tongue. No, you're doing it all wrong. Instead of tearing it off, let the flap sit in the bowl after you put it down the cover. When you flush, the suction will pull on the flap and take it away. Aren't you glad you know that now? That dark square or rectangle at the end of your toothpaste tube? What does that mean? Is it color-coded to show what ingredients are in there? Or does it show whether the toothpaste synthetic or natural? Well, sorry, but the truth isn't that exciting. The markings are there for the assembly machines. They help the machines know where to cut and fold each tube. We've all driven home from the supermarket, taken a right turn a little too hard, and crash! Sounds like the groceries volcano just erupted in the trunk. Look closely in the trunk. You might see some little hooks in there. You can hang your bags on them. Ooh. Yeah, some cars have them behind the front seats instead. You can use them to hang clothes or even your takeout bag. You may have noticed that members of the flight crew like to touch the overhead compartments while they're walking down the aisle. They don't have a weird desire to touch everything. There are actually handles along the edges to give them a better grip while walking. Go ahead and use them the next time you feel like a mid-air stroll. It's definitely better than grabbing onto everyone's headrests. Don't you hate that? A shiny brass doorknob adds just the right amount of fancy to your front door. But that's not all it does. Brass, like anything with copper alloy in it, has antimicrobial properties that many harmful germs and bacteria just can't stand. In high traffic areas, these brass knobs and handles are the perfect way to get rid of those nasty germs without having to use harsh chemicals all the time. The only downside is that brass is a lot more expensive than other metals. That might be why it's hardly used for this anymore. You know those silica gel packets that come with new bags, shoes, and many other products? Think twice before you throw them away. You might want to keep them because they preserve the freshness of your shoes or some other product you got them with. These bags are like a drying agent since they drive the moisture out of their surroundings. You can use them for other things like, for instance, when you need to dry out your phone or something else that got water in the wrong place. Now, when dealing with a stapler, you can accidentally staple pages you didn't really want to put together. It's not easy to remove them unless you use a simple trick. Pay attention to the front part of your stapler. See that metal plate over there? It's called the anvil. Turn your stapler upside down. This way, you can spin the wheel to the temporary staple option so it won't be so hard to remove the pins. Yup, the anvil is there, so you can adjust the settings for the stapler. Now, we're so used to toothpaste being multicolored that we mostly don't even wonder why it's so. Well, back in the 1970s, people became more aware of how important dental hygiene is. They wanted their toothpaste to do more than simply clean their teeth. That's why Aquafresh was the first company that came up with a toothpaste that had ingredients for mouthwash too, which is the blue stripe. Later on, they added red, which represents ingredients that help you take care of your gums. Aluminum foil boxes have a feature we can truly call hidden. It's not like anyone bothers to take a close look at the side of the box, right? There are rounded perforations you can punch through with your fingers. Just press your finger into the resulting hole and hold it. That's how you secure the cardboard rule while pulling out a foil. Beanie pom-poms look like a cute, or ugly if you're not a fan, ball on the top of your hat. It may not have a specific purpose today, but it hasn't always been a fashion detail. One of the possible explanations says that beanies are something the Vikings invented because they were looking for a way to keep their ears warm throughout the long cold winters. After some time, they added pom-poms at the top too. They were supposed to prevent the seams from coming apart. Now, I'm guessing the traditional horns were added sometime after that. You can find a tomato pin cushion for pins and needles in many households. But check this strawberry dangling from the top. It's kind of weird, considering this fruit doesn't grow on tomatoes. But in this context, strawberries are there for needles you're using at the moment, so you don't get lost while searching through a bunch of other needles on a cushion. Take a look at the cap on top of your toothpaste tube or a cream. This pointed cone you see inside the cap 
is helpful when you're opening a new tube because you can use it to puncture the seal. Yup, no need to look for something sharp or use your nails. Is there a pattern of blue and white bristles on your toothbrush? Sure, it looks a bit more stylish like this, but this feature has an actual purpose. Manufacturers design the blue dye to wear off. This mostly happens at the same time when you're supposed to be getting a new toothbrush. They recommend doing it every three to four months, but in case you forget, it can be a handy reminder. Many cars have black dots along the window edges. It's a cool design, true. But car manufacturers probably wouldn't spend so much of their money and time adding something that didn't have a practical use. These dots are something we call fritz, which are different than fritz the German guy. When the temperature in your car reaches extreme fluctuations, the fritz are there to make sure the rim of the glass doesn't shatter. Good idea! Gas cans have a very small second hole. It's there to prevent some sort of the glug that occurs when air gets sucked into the hole as you pour the liquid out of it. Because when something like this happens, the flow of liquid is not even, which means more of it will end up all over the floor. The hole is also there to help vent the gas and prevent the can from bursting in between uses. And that's a good idea, too.